The basis of conservatism is a desire for less government interference or less centralized authority or more individual freedom. Ronald Reagan. What is going on, everybody? My name is Logan, and welcome back to The Conservation Project, the podcast for the average Joe that still believes in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that we are still one nation under God. We have a much different episode coming today, something that you haven't seen yet, but hopefully something that's going to start becoming a little more regular, at least once a month is what we're shooting for. Uh, But this is a kind of a special guest episode. Now, not only is this going to become a regular thing, uh, this first one is going to start off with uh, with someone who is actually becoming a part of TCP, and her name is Chloe, and we're about to uh, we're about to bring her in. But so Chloe is actually an ambassador for YWA, and if you don't know YWA, YWA is a Christian conservative female leadership group. Um, it's a project for concerned women. Uh, say they say that women can be leaders in the conservative uh, movement while defending religious liberties. Um, and they discuss the damaging of sexual exploitation of women, uh, the importance of sanctity of life, uh, a, a ton, a ton of issues. Um, and they are an absolute blessing in the conservative field and the conservative realm. Now, as I mentioned, her name is Chloe, and uh, she is, there you go, Chloe, welcome, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining. I'm glad we could finally get you on here. Hi. Um, I just want to talk about some mostly it's just some social issues um i really want to create social change in the conservative movement i think there are a lot of things that need to be worked on in the conservative movement um i've been like a psychology student for years i've taken so many psychology (laughs) classes i just think like that's one of the main things that i have been focusing on over the years not that i don't focus on other things there was something that I wanted to bring up first. Yeah, go for that it. It's not necessarily to do with um, social issues like at all. But, um, well, it kind of is when it comes to like COVID and everything. Right. But my mom was like earlier, she was discussing the vaccine and everything. And she was like, well, your father was reading an article about, you know, vaccines. And he was um, reading about how there's, more dangerous um, variants coming out other than right. Omicron. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I was so mad because I was like, I thought, I thought that once the virus mutated so many times that it would, you know, calm down. It wouldn't be as severe. Like, yeah. I was not aware that, I mean, I guess I haven't read about it as much as I, as much as I should. I thought that the vax, like, I mean, the virus was going to calm down a little bit, not be as serious. So I was thinking, I literally was walking up the stairs before I started to, before I got on here with you. I was like, well, goodness, like, you might as well, I might as well skip all my 20s now. Like, I might as well just turn <laughs> 30. And she was like, well, that's not the attitude that you need to, like, have about this or whatever. And I was like, well, like, seems like it's never ending and it's ridiculous <laughs> like i'm tired of it yeah. well it's I it's funny yeah it's funny you mentioned that my dad and i were actually having that conversation um i think yesterday and, and it, it's it's kind of a sad realization but i've i've kind of mulled over this more and more you know this is becoming a thing uh i've i've heard people like ben shapiro touch on this as well you know You've made your decision. You've either gotten the vaccine and the pandemic is over. Or you haven't, and the pandemic's over. You've ma- you're a grown adult. You've made your decisions, and it is what yeah. it is. And most of us here have had it. Like it's not, you know, yeah, it sucks, but it's it's an illness. This is not. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I was sick a month ago to the day. Like it just this that's life. And you know, the thing mm-hmm. is, you are to a degree. We're all gonna have to learn to live with it. And I don't think. 
that anybody wants to accept that. And I don't either, but I, I, the more I think about it, the more I think about, well, just because of the polarization of, you know, in the media and all of this kind of stuff, I don't think that we have to view it in those terms. It's just, you know, you get sick. It's what happens. That's life. And I think it's a difficult thing for a lot of people to come to grips with. And it really wasn't until I talked to my dad about this because he put it in that perspective of, yeah, I mean, of course it sucks. And we've been seeing it in the media for what, two years almost. I mean, it, it's like, yeah, it sucks to listen to, but on that same token, we get kind of the opportunity to choose to look at it in a more positive light. And we don't really have mm-hmm. to listen to these goobers like Fauci and all this garbage coming out of the top. The elites mm-hmm. of this really don't matter. You know, it's, it, it's, I think it's all in perception or perspective, yeah. but For sure. It's something that we don't need to be afraid of anymore at this point. And also it's not something that I want to keep hearing in the news over and over again. Like I barely watch the news anymore because of that reason. Like even some conservative news medias talk about it all the time. I'm like, can we just move on and talk about other important things just besides this? Like it's okay to talk about it sometimes. Yeah. But I wish that, People would bring other topics into the conversation, more of like social change, yep. which is what I'm about to talk about. Um, I want to talk about some things that have recently been been said to me and like done to me in the conservative movement. Right. Um, specifically because I brought them up yeah, yeah. because I was trying, I was the one that was trying to create the change and it I got some backlash for it. Um, I didn't get like a ton of backlash for it because um, a lot of the women that I was speaking to and about were very supportive of what I had to say. Right. And even like a lot of conservative guys too were, but there's always going to be those people that are trying to bring you down for thinking something different. Of course. Yeah. Conservatism is supposed to be about rethinking and and you know bringing new ideas into the picture because i feel like um we get so caught up in our own echo chambers to the point where we won't listen to anything that anybody has to say but i wanted to talk about how i've been told how important it is for conservative women to get married um, and that's the only plan that God has for us. Um, I'd have to disagree. I think marriage is great, and I do want to get married. I think starting a family is wonderful, and I think God does have that plan for me and like other women as well. Right. Um, I don't think it's bad necessarily to start your career and on track for that and get your degree become financially stable before you get married i don't think that's a problem at all um, i agree yeah but i do think the problem is is that other conservatives are telling you how to live your life and yeah. like i feel like god is supposed to be telling us what we're supposed to be doing he's the guide of our lives and he's the one that makes our plans and someone that knows us and knows what's good for us and i've had people tell me that oh well you know you should be just settling down and getting married right now um starting a family it's kind of hard to do that whenever i'm getting my degree in criminal justice and then i'm going on to get my master's degree in forensic psychology you kind of have to go to school get those degrees establish that career and later on like i would like to join like a federal agency or something like that and i mean it's kind of hard to start a family and not exactly be financially stable where you're at and everything like that so i just think that you know god is the one who has the right path for us and I feel like what I'm doing is God's plan and he is happy with what I'm doing. I'm not going to rush getting married. Like I think, I think conservative women should be dating 
to get married. That's very yep. important to me. <laughs> and I, I don't just talk to anybody or date somebody just for the heck of it or whatever. No, um, I, I agree. Yeah. Once I realize, oh, wait, well, this person is not someone I could see myself marrying. Yep. I'm gonna, I'm gonna back out. I'm gonna tell them this is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking to establish my life with someone eventually, and this is not it. No, that's I, not always offensive to the person because they might be looking for something else, and that's completely fine. Yeah, I, I I've had this conversation with my girlfriend multiple times. Uh, yeah, exactly. It is. And- it is it is one of the hardest uh, it's one of the hardest things to get through the minds of a lot of young people, especially young people who are getting involved uh, in politics. And mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of a lot of politics right now. Is uh, this is the way it should be? Uh, be yes. all in all, straight up. And there's there's a lot of problems in that for young impressionable people getting involved in something that is becoming increasingly polarizing. And, yeah. you know, you, you touch on something very important as far as letting God lead your life, um, because politics and religion do not go hand in hand in the way that they once did. And, yes. and it's, you know, C.S. Lewis has one of my favorite quotes about that is if you want religion, if you, if you want a religion to make you feel really comfortable, comfortable, I certainly do not recommend Christianity. I've always loved that quote because... Uh, it is becoming more and more true in today's politics because of the, I mean, look at, look at a lot of the, the way we've taken God out of schools. You know, you talk about mm-hmm. formations and, and foundations, you take that away and this is, you know, you get a lot of, you get a lot of altercation going through and look at the, you know, the political elites and what's happening there. You know, you, you see a lot of people who don't believe in that sanctity anymore. I mean, that, look at the way what happened with uh, McAuliffe and Yunkin in, in Virginia, you know, when, when, when Yunkin was talking about uh, what McAuliffe was saying about, you know, the children and taking critical race theory out and stuff like that, you, you know, you have a lot of problems that you can lead yourself to. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you hit the nail on the head with that. Right. And I've been like scold. I was like scolded on Instagram live for, saying or like person was scolding me for wanting to establish my career go like go to school and get my degree um I was like well first of all I go to a private Christian school and they're not leading me into these like crazy leftist like all the way on the left views like we don't teach critical race theory and I'm in a I mean, I've seen, I've read in my um, criminal justice, like textbooks, some, some left leaning views, but not like way polarizing on the left. It's interesting to see what other views are and what people have to say. Um, But I was told, well, you're completely the opposite of what a conservative man wants. I was like, no, I was like, conservative man is wanting a woman who exhibits conservative values and conservative values don't always have to be I'll have to stay at home and you know get married or have kids first that's not what conservative values is someone like conservative values I would describe as um first of all being a Christian um, devoting your life to that one person forever and right. being faithful to them, um, eventually starting a family. I think that's part of conservative values. It just doesn't have to be right away, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it doesn't have to be a, a pre a, a defined <laughs> timeline and everything like that. You know, you get into a lot of risky territory, I believe, when you when you view things out of that lens, especially if you're if you're a Christian. You know, you, yeah. you you run some you run some risky uh, you run a risky route when you do it like that because of you know where are you really putting your trust and your hope and your faith in and I mm-hmm. I think that's uh, I think that's also one of the biggest things for young kid uh, young people who are 
who are trying to understand what's happening in the world. And I think a lot more young people than ever are trying to get involved with politics and world news and stuff like that because of COVID. You know, we are in a very polarizing time that is very in your face, no matter what age. I mean, for God's sake, they're trying to vaccinate five-year-olds. Okay. You know, you, you put it in those, in those perspectives and, and everyone's included. Um, and, and that creates, you know, that creates some difficulty in the long run because, you know, it, it's, what is it that Ronald Reagan said? We're always one, uh, one generation from losing our freedom, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. it, it, he's absolutely right. Because if, if the current generation doesn't teach this generation that's growing up in this, how to re- how to respond and how to react, um, we're, we're <laughs> you can take it down a path that I don't think any of us want to see. Right. And I think, I think the thing with that is that a lot of people are becoming so polarized to their own side, especially because of everything that happened last year with, um, you know, um, the Capitol riots and everything like that. And, um, January 6th and that, that whole event was, um, named as terrorism. I think it was very polarized. Um, being like, you know, right wing terrorists. Mm-hmm. I think that has divided people so much. I agree. I think if people had looked into it and actually studied the situation and what happened and known that Trump was calling for everyone to stop the violence, okay. you know, quit fighting, quit going into the Capitol building. Um, yeah. And people didn't see that because his yep. tweet got deleted and his whole and his whole Twitter got deleted yep. or like banned for a while. I don't know. Um, I think it's crazy because people are only willing to see their own side. And every it's like everything is a political statement all the time now. Yep. Um, yeah, that's true. Something else I wanted to talk about was like just the difference between what accountability is in cancel culture, because as Christians, we are supposed to be holding each other accountable for our words and our actions because that is what Christ wanted. His followers, his disciples were all holding each other accountable as they were following Christ. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Um, I got in a situation recently where I felt the responsibility to stand up for my friend Um, She was being degraded. I was being degraded. And many other women were being degraded on this like Instagram live by someone who considers themselves like a conservative. Um, Things were said is like, no one's ever going to want to marry these women. Um, You should always bow down to men. You're completely unattractive. It was, it was terrible. And I was like, like, is this really what, Conser- all conservative men think I don't think so like it that's that would be a polarizing statement to say well all men all conservative men are like this right I would never right. say that but I was really tired of it and I just thought right. you know why would a Christian conservative be speaking like this to women this person literally has a bible verse in their bio yeah and I looked up the bible verse and I was like <laughs> yeah no i i, I was like, don't know what's going on yeah and i was like you know besides i know that god has all of our backs like he is the one our ultimate protector and everything is our ultimate guide in life but i was like if these if no conservative man in his life is going to stick up for these women like I'm gonna take it upon myself to do it, my of you know course. myself. Um, they're spo- conservative men are supposed to want to protect yep. conservative women and uplift them and make them feel better about themselves, make them feel safe. Of course, and this is not what was happening at all. Well, yeah, and, and that's that we're supposed to do as a as a as a Christian male. I mean, that is that you are right there is the is the nutshell. That's the foundation. Yeah. Yeah, Christian it's about women being a leader. Are, yeah, and Christian women are supposed to do that as well. We're supposed to be of course. building our conservative men up and encouraging them in Christ and 
this is not what was happening. And like I said, I'm not saying all men are evil. Like I'm not like that. Of course. And, you know, how extremely on the left women are like, well, take down the patriarchy. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not like that at all. I'm not saying that. That would be um, a fun topic to get into. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I said, most of the feedback I got was extremely positive. People were DMing me on the side and like, this is not acceptable, acceptable behavior from this person, especially if they're considered an influencer, not in like a conservative influencer. Right. And it's like, who are we listening to you guys? Like, yeah. I would, you know, I would be much more impacted by listening to someone with 50 or 75 followers than yep. this person. But Well, and it's a um, cultural thing as well, too. You know, in, to a degree, we've built that culture. You know, I, I've talked about that a lot. Um, you know, you, you mentioned the accountability aspect of it, and you're you're spot on. I mean, that you, you we really don't have a choice at this point but to mm. hold each other accountable. Um, yeah. and, and the problem is, is a lot of our generation has deemed this that cliche of, well, you're just snitching on somebody or, or garbage like that. no. And if you put it in terms like I did a couple episodes ago, I'd list it off representative after representative of people who voted for Build Back Better, people who voted for the impeachment of Trump, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they were all Republicans. They were all people right. who say they stand on the Christian conservative mantle, yet they voted for Build Back Better, which if you, I know that those people are more inclined and more knowledgeable about that bill than the majority, than 90 percent of the average citizen. They're the ones that actually has to read that in detail. And a lot of a lot of everyday people, a lot of average Joes don't do that. So at what point are we drawing the line on, no, you, this is what you ran on. This is what you said. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's the reason I have a lot of big problems with, with people like uh, Dan Crenshaw. You ran on this and then you turned it around and now you're blaming me for it. Well, hold on a minute. Now, when that bleeds oh, through that to... Bleeds through social media like you're talking about and the same people who are in our generation that are trying to lead up a new generation of these people and they're going with the mantle of influencer and, and all that kind of stuff um you know <laughs> that's where we really have to watch it these aren't elected mm -hmm. people these are people with hundreds of thousands of followers on a social media outlet saying that they have this Bible verse in their bio and they are this and this and this. But when you get out of their social media and you see them in person, they're not that way. You have to have accountability because if we don't have it from the foundation, we will not, that will not, that tree will not sprout. It will not grow. And not representing the conservative movement. And that's exactly. what I was trying to get at. That's exactly what I was trying to get at is they're not properly representing yep. who we are. And it's giving us a bad rap. Like it's giving, it's making us look bad. And that's exactly what I was saying. Cause I was like, this person should not be representing this organization because of the words that continually come out of their mouth. Right. And then when you try to hold them accountable for it, like, Oh, well, are you not Christian conservative? I'm like, well, yes I am. But like, you're just trying to cancel me. Like, no, I'm just trying to hold you accountable for the words that you have said to other women, my friends and myself. Right. It's wrong, and you should not be representing this organization because of it. That's, no, that's accountability in Christianity. People yep. also took, I was going to say, is that people also took what I said about um, promoting body positivity so much more wrong, wrong than like they should have, because I was, in no way I was saying that, well, yeah, obes obesity is completely fine. Like, I'm just encouraging people just eat what they want all, all day, like, you know, not get any exercise. That's completely not what I meant to whatsoever. So I what situation saying, is this that you're talking about? Can you give some backstory um, on this? Yeah. So a certain influencer had made some comments to one of my friends um, about how like unattractive she was and stuff like that. Like um, at one point they had met in person and everything and he was just saying some, I don't know, like, he was just saying some pretty awful things to my friend. And I, here, this is what, this is what I want to say. Like, 
I looked at her on FaceTime because we live far apart and I said, look, like, you don't got to worry about this because like, girl, I got you. Right. Like you can sit back because I know the words that are coming out of this man's mouth um, are mean and vicious. Right. And I know that you are telling the truth because you have a good heart and you are a good person. I know what you're saying is not like, I know what he's saying is not right. And so I was like, I'm, I'm going to stick up for you. But what I was saying, that's pretty much the whole backstory. And then the whole like Instagram live happened and he was begging me to come on his Instagram live while I was at work. That's and weird. I was sitting, yeah, I work at a desk sometimes. Like half of my job is like at a desk and the other half is like hands-on stuff. Right. And he um he was like, get on the live, get on the live. Like, why are you in the chat? I was sitting with my coworkers and they were all like I work with like some like older people as well, like in like not old people right. but like older people like in their 40s 50s um so they were all like surrounding me and they were laughing at what he was saying because they were like they were telling me like it's totally okay for you to be on here listening to what he has to say but is it worth your time yeah <laughs> i was like i was like i mean i just want to see try to see where he's coming from but they were like it's totally okay for you to be sitting here listening to this but it would be totally unprofessional right now at work for you to get on this live. I was like, I know. And that's what makes me so mad is because I don't have time to defend myself right now. I'm just, I'm trying to do my job. Yeah. I was like, if he had asked me two hours later after I'd gotten off work, to get on the live, I would have been completely okay with that. I wouldn't have been as vicious and mean as he was, but I would have, my truth my side of the story yeah um i wanted to bring it back to the body positivity thing because i yeah. went off on a tangent on no, that yeah. um i was trying to get at that people should not we should be focusing like on character as christians we should be focusing on the inside we have good hearts are we good people right we should be yeah. focusing on that um, should not because that's what Christ focuses on. He's not worried about what we look like on the outside. That's what I meant is that we should be promoting, we should be building people up. We should not be tearing them down based on their appearance. We shouldn't be Christian conservative people should not be saying, "Well, oh, this girl's so ugly. She's so yeah. big or whatever." That's not what we should be focusing on. And I'm not saying that we should be promoting living the best for like being the best versions of ourselves through you know either like physicality like emotionally spiritually we should be wanting to be healthy i never said like it's okay for us to remain unhealthy um yeah. it's just that people shouldn't bring others down based on their appearance yeah. and they shouldn't be involved in the conservative movement um, if they're going to do that and we just need to bring accountability for their actions yeah. and these people need to apologize for their actions, um, just quit bringing negativity to the movement, if that makes sense. No, you, you, it absolutely that's makes sense. I mean, yeah. we're... And last time I checked, like, that's called being a hypocritical conservative Christian. Yeah. So it's like, let's stop being hypocritical and let's actually represent christ in the movement no you, you're spot on and, and uh the account yeah i mean i couldn't i could not have said that better because the biggest problem right now is if we don't have that accountability within our own we're going to keep seeing this stereotype that we have been seeing for years that if you are a christian or a conservative or a christian conservative you're nothing more than some country bumpkin that's a racist and i have i cannot tell you how many times i have seen that exact same argument from anybody mm -hmm. on the left and it is it really is to a degree it really is up to us like there there is a certain point where we have to hold the line we have to have that accountability mm -hmm. and you know, 
true Christian conservatism is some of the most inclusive and understanding people that you will meet. Not because mm-hmm. because a lot of us fall along the lines of hate, love the sinner, hate the sin. And yeah. if you can base your day in and day out life in politics and in the world off of that perspective, you will be surprised how often you can find yourself creating a friend out of what many would assume would be an enemy. And I mean, that is yeah. in a nutshell right there. That is, that is, that is Christian conservatism. And, and that it's huge. It's huge. And people do not, people misunderstand what it really means. Yeah. I have plenty of friends that are in the middle about a lot of things or like on kind of on the left. I have like, I mean, I don't have like, I don't have many like extreme like left wing friends or anything like that. Um, I think it's hard to see people like it's good to see people's want point of views like different people's point of views. It's great. It's hard to see where co- someone's coming from when their views are so extreme and polarizing. I think there's a point where we all just need to meet in the middle. That's what I've always thought. Sometimes that's really hard and impossible. Because we're we're all like, we're not perfect, we're imperfect. And I don't think there's ever going to be a time where everyone thinks the same at all. Or everyone comes to an agreement. But I think many people that we can have that sort of meet on the, like meet in the middle on certain topics is that would be great but um like i said it's not always possible and i think Um, you know i do think for what it's worth i think we're seeing that happen more and more now and especially as especially in this last week you know president biden has had a horrible week like one of the worst weeks a president has had in recent history I mean, the man's approval rating has dropped down to 33% with the last I saw. And I've been seeing in this in this term as, as president, I have seen a lot of people go a lot more towards the middle. I've seen a lot of people go to a legitimate libertarian stance. The, you know, in a lot, the, the term libertarian has been really misconstrued lately. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people really don't understand what it means to be a libertarian. And uh, people just kind of abandon, you know, they jump ship from the far left or the far right. And they're like, ah, screw it. I'm a libertarian. Like, no, no, you're still voting blue or you're still voting red. Like, I I understand. But on that same token, you know, <laughs> you are, really I feel like. like self-governing, right? Like you, you yeah. just want to, it's just basically yeah. like promoting self. To a degree, yeah. I know some people who are legitimately like that. But I also think on that same token, we're seeing a lot of people kind of – we had the real strong right of, of Trump, and now we're having the real crazy left of, of Biden and his administration. And I think we're seeing a lot of people in these last few years go to a more middle-of-the-ground uh, middle ground stance. And I think – I've been seeing that – you know, I'm very involved in the gun culture. Uh, I, that's just how I am. And I have been seeing that a lot lately because a lot of people are seeing the stuff that's been coming out about, uh, these people enacting new gun laws, Washington, Washington state just enacted one that is, it is one of the most oppressive gun laws that I have ever seen. I mean, it is a swath of stuff and we're seeing people on a lot of different fronts, politically speaking, say, okay, this side is pushing it way too hard and way too far. Mm -hmm. It's time to rein it in. And I think I, – I really agree with you. I think seeing um, seeing people kind of meet in the middle on a, a lot of things has been a very rare occurrence in the past. But I think a lot of people are seeing what's going on and going, okay, maybe, maybe this is doable. I think we're actually starting mm-hmm. to lay some kind of groundwork where maybe that's – not as far reaching as we thought. At, at least that's what I'm hoping for because I agree wholeheartedly with what you said about that. It is – it is hard to see where people that are so entrenched in one thing or the other can kind of let that go. And I think it's taking a, a certain amount of polarization that's Mm -hmm. causing that to be at least considered. Yeah. And I think there's like, there's even some celebrities that have taken like a middle stance and I very much appreciate 
Yeah, yeah. Celebrities like that, like I think Russell Brand, that kind of takes yeah. that stance. And I mean, he's not he's not even American. Right, but it's right. Like, kind of nice to like see what he has to say. Joe Rogan. Uh, like, he's not from America. I don't know if he's like American citizen now. And then yeah, him also uh, even like random. I think Matthew McConaughey is kind of like that a little bit. Yeah, but he's I'm been real odd certain. lately. Yeah, he's. <laughs> interesting i was thinking about reading his book to see what he had to say but um i think it's called like green lights or something like that yeah yeah but i think the more you read the more you can see other people's point of view um the more you learn honestly the more you read yeah. um another thing i was gonna say is like what type of conservative influencers are we giving our attention to yeah like, like I said before, is someone really a conservative influencer if they don't have anything positive to add to the picture or the movement? Yeah. And what's coming out of their mouths is going to promote change, or is it going to bring us two steps back? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, is it absolutely. going to make, is it going to promote even more polarization in the movement? It's gonna is it going to make people divide even more and go to one side or the other and say, I'm staying over here for good yep. and I'm not coming back. Um, as um, Sadie Robertson said something interesting and I think it was from passion um, that like Christian, mm -hmm. I didn't go to it because I felt like it was a big, I feel like it was way too many people at a time where COVID was spreading so fast, but right. Um, a lot of people got COVID after it, apparently, and I think I heard some people were even going to passion when they had COVID. Wow. I was like, when was know, it? I was like, I'm brave. Um, it was in Atlanta, I think, a couple weeks ago. Gotcha. But, okay. Yeah, Sadie Robertson had some said something like, if we are not directly pointing back um, to Christ with our messages and our posts— um, those messages being uplifting to others, love others, and accepting right. others into the church. I feel like we are not bringing positive influence to the movement. Yeah, absolutely. Like she said, someone that has 50 followers could influence um, people way more than someone with 30K followers who brings no actual change, does yep. not influence your heart and your mind in a good way. Because we have so much capability of change than we actually know. Like my platform is so small, but our message can get spread so fast. Like Absolutely. With my video and everything, um, I had my account on public at the time. Could have been a mistake. <laughs> but um, so there were people just like spreading my message like crazy because I had my insights on. I was a creator account. And I think about 70 people sent my video. Whether that was a good thing or not, whether or not they were saying positive things, I don't know because mm -hmm. you can't see what people are saying. Right. But about half of those could have been positive, could have influenced others and, you know, brought others closer to the conservative movement. I don't really know. Um, I had a person in the comments... Not on my video. It was I was talking to somebody I forgot whose post it was. They were saying something about how they had backed out of TPUSA events mm -hmm. because that not everyone that went to the TPUSA events were Christian. And I said, "Well, you know, TPUSA is not a religious organization. It's exactly. a nonpartisan political organization." I said, no doubt there are Christian speakers, um, there's Christian services, and there's worship worship sessions, and there's also a segment of TPUSA, and it's called TPUSA Faith. Mm -hmm. Those yep. are the faith representatives of TPUSA. Um, I think that's amazing. I think bringing Christianity, Christianity into it is amazing. But there's also p many people that I've met at these TPUSA events that are Mormon, yeah. Jewish, and I've heard so many like anti-Semitic comments. Ugh. Yeah, that's why I'm like, 
some it's like half the people I'm like I can associate with these yeah. people and other half I'm like I have a hard time getting through to some of these people that are so like way over here and um I I was like all this Christianity stuff being brought into TPUS is TPUSA is great but if we're closing it off to other people of different religions right. then we're not reflecting Christ because um by allowing people to be at TPUSA events who are of different religions and have different beliefs, that's the best possible way that we can spread yeah. the gospel and promote that openness um, on social media. Absolutely. And that's like American. That's, <laughs> yes. I feel like that's the most pos- positive approach to being yeah. a quote unquote influencer. Like Seti Robertson said, you can be an influencer and you don't have to be famous. You can be famous, but you're not always considered an influencer because Absolutely. what's coming out of your mouth is not influencing someone in any possible yeah. you know, positive way at all. It's true. Yeah, yeah. It, it's absolutely true. It's uh it's an interesting it's an interesting dynamic we've created for ourselves as a as a mm-hmm. as a kind of a community, if you will, because you know, like you mentioned, there was a lot of really like at that uh, Arizona event, that TPUSA Arizona event. I was, I was really excited when I heard that uh, a guy named John Lovell was actually one of the uh, one of the honored speakers there, uh, because yeah. I've followed John Lovell since his YouTube channel was pretty darn small. Um, mm-hmm. His channel is called the Warrior Poet Society, and I, I mean, when I was in like when I was in my Bible school, I was doing. Um, I was actually doing projects on him and his channel because he was kind of the idealistic guy that I always, that type that I always looked up to because he was, he's retired special forces. He he was a military guy. He taught, you know, gun instructions, tactic instructions and stuff like that. So I cling to that um, kind of thing. And he was just, he was a good dude, a good family guy, a Christian who was not afraid to talk about his faith, who started a YouTube channel to try to help people, you know, defend themselves, defend their lives and their, their family and from a positive perspective. And I cling from that to that from the start, but I will say that as he grew and he grew rapidly and made a business out of it, seeing him involved in something like uh, turning point was mm-hmm. really neat for me to see kind of that expansion. But it also got me thinking about what we, you were talking about with so many people involved in turning point of whatever religion and he kind of hit the nail on the head he was talking about stuff like this and you know it's great that christians are getting involved on a grand scale especially like a turning point event um but on that same token we have to have that i don't really know of a better way to put it but we have to have kind of that inclusivity of um of you know other religions you know that that freedom of religion is an extremely American concept. I mean, that is, you're talking about the, you know, the basis of our, of our foundation. Like, you know, yes, we have the freedom of religion, but we also, the Christians in that have always been the leaders. You know, there's a reason why it's always been one nation under God. That's right. that's the friggin' tagline of this show, okay? Like, there's a reason yeah. for that. You know what I'm saying? And yes, we have to lead by example, and it, it is mm-hmm. it is the pinnacle of what we were called to do because we have to we have to toe that line. And yeah. there is absolutely nothing wrong with people of other religions because it's getting involved because it's exactly like you said. You know, if they're involved, we have the chance to minister. And yeah, exactly. yeah, you're spot on. I have a friend who I met at the TPSA event in Arizona, and he is Mormon, and he's so kind, so nice, and everything. And he was like showing me all his like the maps of like more like where Mormons yeah. are in the country, yeah. and I was like, I just love hearing about all this. And I don't know, Mormons have always been some of the most <laughs> kind people that I've ever met because we had. I don't know if you remember, like, oh, well, I feel like everyone remembers this. In 2011, whenever there were tornadoes and everything yep. that came through, and there were 
a group of Mormons, I guess, I don't know if they were on their, their mission, like their mission trip or whatever, um, but they were in Huntsville area, and right. they were helping us, like, you know, get, like, get all the trees and everything, like the wood, all the stuff that had, been, like, torn apart in oh. my backyard, like, there were just, like, so many, so many problems. Like two, two of our trees were uprooted, and like we had branches yeah. everywhere. So they were helping, like clean up, us clean up. And I was like, you know, like, this would be a good opportunity to talk to someone about Christianity and stuff. Yeah. And I was just like, they were like, I think I said something like, my family will be like praying for you guys. Be, um, this is like, this is a lot of kindness on your part and everything. And, um, I feel like when you say you're a Christian and you spread that kindness and love, then like they see that part of Christianity as well. Like you, you know that you got to them in a certain way and like you're, you're trying to reflect that like kindness and like love of Christ. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, (laughs) yeah. I mean that, that's, if there's no, better way of summing up Christianity than that right there. I mean, it is, exactly. you know, it, I was involved in Red Cross, um, for, for quite a while. And, um, that was, that was a, that was a huge, huge aspect of, for, for a lot of us, because a lot of us came from the same background. We were all, you know, Christian oriented, you know, a lot of us came from that background and, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it, that was a big thing, especially when, you know, disaster would come through. And that was one thing I always loved about my church is that we could, um, whenever disaster happened, we could, we had the outreach, we had the the outreach capability and Mm -hmm. yeah, you have to, it's all about hope. You know, I, I've I've talked about this on nearly every episode. I, I always end with, you know, the, you know, we joke around about it, but it's the toxic positivity thing. You know, it, it is, you know, people may, in some circles, they may get real pissed off that, you know, you're looking at a dire situation in a positive manner. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's kind of Christianity. I don't know what else to tell you. Like that is, if you can't find the the good and the bad, you're going to have a miserable life. And a lot of people really disrupt what it is to be a Christian by polluting that very thing. Because we know that in the end, where we're going is going to be so much better than where we're at. So it doesn't matter. I mean, everything that happens on earth, I'm not saying it doesn't matter. It does matter. And there are ways that we can help out our fellow Americans and even like, of course, people in our own communities, but there are other ways that we can promote change. That's, that's by promoting change. We are promoting positivity. Yep. Absolutely. Because we know that it's that we are capable of promoting change and um i feel like that's one of the only ways we should be living our lives because i feel like that's what god would want um yeah i agree and when we get to heaven everything's going to be completely perfect so we're not going to have to worry about promoting any change um i feel like i'm going to get to heaven and be like crap there's nothing to change <laughs> like i can't promote any more change um I, i'm just kidding but like <laughs> there's so many things on earth that are completely imperfect so yeah. there's so many ways that we can reach out to people and um like i was talking about like the um degrading women earlier and i feel like um grading women in other countries like they have it like they have it way worse than we do because um, women have a lot more rights in the U S Oh yeah. Um, than out in the middle East. And personally, like, I mean, you can't change the whole world all at once. Yeah. You kind of have to take it like one country at a time, you know? Yeah, but absolutely. Eventually reaching out and trying to promote change in other countries would be, very important. I mean, very important to me. Yeah. Charity starts at the home. You know, you, you, you start and yeah. you reach out. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Exactly. Part of it, part of, um, degrading women, like in, I was talking about the Middle East, like 
mean, that's that that's scary. They they deal with a lot worse situations than we do as Americans, right. as American women. Um, I mean, that's like part of their you know, extreme like religion. So it's like yeah. that's that's kind of scary, and it's hard to promote change in the that culture, region, yeah. that region, and that you know. But I mean, it's always possible. Anything's possible. Yeah, but, of course. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, do you have anything else you want to cover? I don't have anything else at the moment. Those, those were my like three topics that I wanted to talk about. But Alrighty. it was really nice being on here and everything. Like yeah, absolutely. Like I've out talked myself. <laughs> no, no, that's that's the whole purpose of it. I, I no, that's that's a good thing. Uh, you know, do you have uh, do you want to plug anything as far as social media, anything like that? Um, I can tell audience that my instagram handle is at chloe brianna and um i don't you really use twitter or anything and i don't have a youtube i feel like twitter is so uh, a little bit too polarizing for me in my opinion uh, yeah. i always I, I, I always instagram. say that i always say that yeah. twitter is uh twitter's not a real place every time i bring it up on the show i always say twitter's not a real place <laughs> twitter is a joke everyone gets their news and it's sad nowadays yeah. it's like yeah. the only way you can figure anything out even yeah. if snapchat's down you go on twitter everyone's like snapchat's down i'm like oh, okay yep. so that's the only reason i even have twitter is to check if snapchat's down <laughs> but yeah i mostly only use um fa- i use facebook some but mostly right. instagram like a lot um that's where i promote content and everything right so everyone can go follow me on instagram if they want to i'm probably about to make my account public again i was getting a lot of backlash last week but that's kind of blown over so yeah. um, that kid not yeah. doesn't have as much influence as he thinks he does <laughs> but anyways um Funny. Yeah, but that's the only social media that I use. So everyone go follow me. I'm probably going to turn it public on after this. Awesome. Well, hey, like I said, thank you for uh, thank you for joining. Um, as I have kind of touched on previously, she's actually planning on um, writing for uh, the, the, the website and she's going to write articles and everything. So that's – I think we're both doing that and we're looking – to expand and some other stuff's going to come out here soon so just keep a lookout uh this this episode when everything gets posted it's all going to have uh links to her uh her instagram and to all the stuff that she's going to be doing and and where to find it um but i do want to end with something that she sent me she sent the quote to start with and the verse to uh end with and it's luke 6 27 through 28 but I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. And man, I love that. That, that is awesome. That is so good. That quote to start with and that. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a theme for me this week. So like, I was like, what is the Bible verse that is explaining my life at the well, moment? Hey, That's the one. You, you hit the nail on the head. But hey, I thank you again. This is uh, this is been a, an absolute joy and uh look forward to hearing more from you in the future uh but for now we're gonna wrap it up my name is logan that's chloe this has been the conservation project the podcast for the average joe that still believes in life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and that we are still one nation under god thank you everybody for listening i hope you have a wonderful day <laughs> <laughs>